is by virtue of an interface called the standard input, which is in some sense similar to the standard output. And as before, we'll pretend that the standard input is our whiteboard here. So our programs will be reading information from the whiteboard and printing it out to the whiteboard. The way we achieve that in the text of the program is through a magical word called C in, which stands for character input. So what I'm going to do now is modify this program so that it reads two numbers from the standard input, the size of our imaginary rectangle, and calculates the area of such a rectangle. I'll need a little bit more space. Name to main, open paren, close paren, open face. And I do the following. I introduce two variables, double A, double B. As you can see now, I haven't specified their values. Why? Because I don't know what they are. I have to read that from the standard input. And the way I do that is like this. C in greater than, greater than A. What this does is that it reads one number from the standard input and places it into this variable A. This digraph greater than, greater than, is something that we call an extraction operator. So in some sense, extracts information from standard input, which is always on its left-hand side. And it places that value which it has extracted to the variable on its right-hand side. So you always have the standard input object C in the left-hand side of this operator and a variable on the right-hand side of this operator. Similarly, we read another number from the standard input and place it into B. And now A and B have in them stored the values that were specified by some user of the program on the standard input. And the last statement remains unchanged. It calculates the area of a rectangle based on the values stored in the variables A and B. So let's see now the process of executing this program. I'm going to change just these three parts where actual values get substituted in. As before, we start executing the program from the first statement. The first statement introduces the variable A and associates with it a container, an empty box. This time we haven't specified the value of the variable A, so I'm going to leave the container empty. Next statement introduces the variable B, which also has an empty container associated to it. The third statement reads information from the standard input interface. So I need to have two values on the standard input. And I'm going to write them down on the blackboard here. So this will be our standard input. And let the two values be 5 and 6. So what this statement does is that it extracts the first value of the standard input, that's the number 5, and writes it down here. I've crossed it because upon having been read, it's extracted. So the next thing to extract is the number 6. The next statement does the same thing. It reads a number from the standard input. That's the number 6. It gets stored in the container associated with the variable B, and this value gets crossed out since it was extracted. And finally, we have our old statement which prints out this big message out. 
the only change will be here, here, and here, because now we have different values for the variables a and b. So this value is now 5, the value of b is now 6, and their product is now 30. And the rest remains the same. And this is a program now that will compute the area of an arbitrarily specified rectangle. The very thing that we wanted to do. I will write no more programs and will finish with one closing comment. And that's the meaning of the programs that I've been writing. As you undoubtedly notice, are there some pretty strange things? I mean, what's the deal with this? Why write programs that do senseless things and write stuff on the whiteboard? Isn't programming actually useful? Well, it is. And I'll show you what actually have been done by writing programs. In some sense, our programs were descriptions or instructions for building machines. So, for example, the last program we wrote was a character string description for a machine that looks like this. It's a box that has two inputs. Let's call them A and B. And these two inputs were the arbitrarily specified sides of a rectangle. And what it did was that it outputted a message in which it was, in which, and the part of that message was the area of the rectangle specified by these values. So our programs are machines that have some internal detail. For example, this machine has two variables, A and B, and then it does some multiplication and some stuff that does printing out to the standard output. We really don't care how the actual machine is implemented, but the text that we wrote is good enough of a definition for constructing such a machine. That's the important thing. And this was our standard input, and this was our standard output. So our machine is connected to these two interfaces. The magical thing, or wonderful thing in computer science is that there exists one amazing machine that can take for its input a description like this one, like the program that we wrote, for some machine that takes a text. And upon having read that text, it becomes the machine that's described by this text. And having done so, it's a, it simulates that machine. So were we to give it the program for our machine here, it will transform itself into that machine and behave like that machine. <clears throat> and it turns out, Every personal computer you have, every computer at all, is that machine. And that machine is called a universal computer. And what that enables us is to give computers these programs to execute, so that people like me wouldn't have to do that on the whiteboard. So that's the general usefulness of writing programs, is because we can make machines do them. But that's something I won't be teaching you in this video. And I'll finish with this final note. 